radiation, radiation. We are all scared of radiation, all of us, really. I mean, and uh, we are all exposed to radiation, but nevertheless, we are all scared of radiation. Now, if you are scared of radiation on Earth, be, be prepared. You will be much more scared if you go in space flight. To the point that the question of this talk will be, is this a showstopper? Should we just forget about space because radiation is too high? Well, how much radiation we have in space? And you have seen this already. This is Curiosity. And Curiosity, the MSL, the Mars Science Lab, made the first measurement of radiation in space uh, during the transit to Mars and uh, on the Mars surface. So now we know. We know how much radiation we have in space. How much is it? So how much is on Earth? You know, on Earth uh, is this little square down here. We measure the radiation in millisievert. Uh, now it's a, it's, it's a strange unit. But basically, all of us, we receive uh, one millisievert per year. So in one year, we get one millisievert from everything, from, from the environment, from the soil, from the food, from the cosmic rays. And then it really depends on how you live. I mean, if you go to the dentist many times, as I do, uh, you get a lot of x-rays, and then you have more dose. If you travel a lot, you, you, you even get more dose. If you, if you are married, if you sleep with another person, we are all radioactive, so if you sleep, this person sleeping next to you for at least eight hours per day, some of my friends 16 hours per day, <laughs> they get irradiated by the other person, you know, and that's something people should know before you get married. <laughs> you should sign an informed consent, I say. You know. just, just a warning. But now if you are worried about that, you can say, okay, but you want to go to Mars, keep in mind that on Mars, you have 200 millisievert per year. So you can sleep with another person. I mean, it's not, it's not such a big deal. Because, you know, on Mars, uh, uh, it's almost like one year on Earth. So it's much higher. And even worse, uh, if you are in deep space, uh, you don't have the protection of the Mars atmosphere. You don't have the protection of the planet itself. So you have 700 millisievert per year. 700 millisieverts per year in deep space as compared to one millisievert per year on Earth. Clearly, a very much higher dose. Is this dangerous? Is this a showstopper? The problem is not only the quantity that you get more radiation. The problem is the quality. It's different radiation. We know radiation on Earth. We know X-rays, gamma rays, beta rays, we all know. But radiation in space is heavy ions, iron, these uh, this exotic particles, very heavy, very densely ionizing. We say this is a beautiful image that you see. What you see here, this one, is, is a human cell. This is a human nucleus. So, you know, it's 10 microns approximately. And these two lines that you see here are two iron ions. Huh? that you don't find in space, uh, uh, the, I'm, I'm sorry, that you find in space but not on Earth, except in Darmstadt, the GSI, where we, we, we have it, going through the cells and making damage to, to the DNA. What do we know about this radiation? We, we really don't know much because we don't know it on Earth. We only know it in space or if you are exposed to GSI by accident, which never happened. So the, the only thing we know, we really know, it comes from the, from the comics. Uh, you, know, you know this guy, this is the Incredible Hulk. <laughs> the Incredible Hulk, uh, he was actually exposed uh, to gamma rays. Uh, I think you remember the story. He was working in a nuclear power plant and then he got exposed to gamma rays and then he becomes very nervous and green and very aggressive. <laughs> so this is radiation on Earth. Typical effect of radiation on Earth. <laughs> now, if you go to space, uh, this is what is going to happen. These are, <laughs> these are the Fantastic Four. You know, I thought this was, I was a kid, I thought this was fascinating. One becomes like a stone. I mean, and she's my favorite. She becomes like uh, invisible at will, which is very convenient. Uh, 
this becomes like a fire. I mean, when I was young, I really loved, I wanted to work always on radiation because I thought that could become, you know, invisible at will. It doesn't work that way. So don't try it at home, please. <laughs> but uh, it's not all crazy. You know, Hulk uh, gets nervous, and we know that radiation has some effects uh, on the brain. So you can actually, it's not impossible. And this story that you get the same dose, I don't know if you remember, the Fantastic Four were on space, and then they get exposed to radiation. They are very different, but this is what we call inter-individual variability. In the clinics, uh, in radiotherapy, people know that if you irradiate four patients, uh, you will get four different responses. I mean, not so different, <laughs> but still kind of different. So what do we know apart from that? The other thing we know is that radiation on Earth uh, is done of photons, electrons, these are small particles, uh, and radiation in space, you see, is this uh, heavy particles. So what do you expect? You expect something like that. You know, this is our little astronaut on Earth, uh, and he's getting energy. The, the millisievert is really energy from this lentils, I believe. So you make some damage, but he's still kind of standing. Now, if he goes to space, uh, the same energy, that's what is going to happen. Now you have heavy ions, uh, and this is, you have less uh, peas than lentils, same energy, but the effect uh, is clearly different. So that's uh, what uh, we try to understand. We try to understand what is the qualitative difference. But can we protect ourselves from radiation? Well, you know, this is, I, I want to point out as my previous speaker, that this is, this is not a girl playing with the sand. This is a serious scientific experiment. Uh, it's a serious scientific experiment where uh, uh, this uh, researcher at GSI is trying to measure the shielding properties uh, of the Mars soil. Here it is for you. This is Mars soil. Not really. It's a, it's a simulation of the Mars soil, but really looks like the Mars soil. I mean, it's, a, it's identical, it's pretty much the same. So, I mean, if you want some, I can sell it for a reasonable price. We, we even have uh, moon. This is moon soil, which is gray. And actually, this is also showed by, by the previous speakers. You have these nice caves. So you can go on Mars, you can go in the caves, uh, and you will be protected with this very thick uh, shield. You can even do, this is Mars concrete. These are bricks that you can do with the Mars soil. It's better to use the caves than to dig. Uh, because, you know, if you go to a construction site here in Germany, you see that when people are digging, they make a lot of dust. So you can imagine on the moon, where the gravity is one-sixth, uh, you really make a lot of dust. So you don't want to, do, to be digging. But this can be effective if you are on the planet. What about during the transit, when the dose is even higher? You cannot bring heavy shields, because, you know, the, the weight is what is really expensive in a spacecraft. So you don't want to bring heavy shield. Shielding is a very nice solution on Earth uh, when you go to the dentist. Again, not my dentist, but your dent. Don't go to my dentist because he uses a lot of x-rays and no shielding. <laughs> now, your dentist uses not so much x-rays and plenty of shielding, but that's heavy. So it's a big problem. You will not solve the problem using passive shielding. You can think of active shielding. You can think of electrostatic shielding. I mean, some kind of uh, electrostatic uh, uh, spheres that protect the astronauts. Or even better, you can think to this thing. This is shielding. This is something I think all of you know. This is a beautiful aurora borealis. What is this? This is the shielding of the Earth, the magnetic shielding of the Earth. The solar wind, with these protons and heavy ions, is coming to the Earth, is trying to enter in the Earth, but the magnetic field of the Earth is deflecting these particles. They go to the poles, and then they hit the atmosphere, and you see these beautiful colors. Beautiful. There are many people going there only to see them. You see that the, the green colors is the oxygen. Sometimes it's more on the red than is nitrogen. So that's how Earth uh, is protecting life, uh, using a magnetic field. 
So we could think about using the same, the same system. It's not so easy, but it can be done. So what, we, what do we do really at GSI? We simulate uh, the cosmic rays. This is a typical, th this is our accelerator at GSI. We also have uh, many, many people, thousand, about thousand people working there. We, have, we also have lawyers too, <laughs> it's not <laughs> scientists, but also lawyers, mostly scientists. And we can simulate the particle. We need these huge accelerators because the, the cosmic rays are so energetic. They are so fast. So you need a very large and expensive accelerator to simulate uh, uh, space radiation. But there is, a, there is a nice part of the story. I told you these particles are so effective. You, you do remember the little astronauts killed by the, by the cosmic radiation, which is bad if you are in space. But if you are a patient, and if you can take the same particles and you can shoot them in the tumor, not whole body, but only in the tumor, then you can cure cancer. Well, this is done. And not very far away from here, this is a, this, it was done in Darmstadt for many years, now it's done in Heidelberg. This is a picture of a treatment room in Heidelberg, but they are treating the patients using heavy ions, using carbon ions in this case. So I think this is really fascinating, is the possibility that space research and medicine uh, help each other, you know? That, that, that the same radiation which is a problem in space can be a cure for cancer on Earth. So at the end, shall we go to Mars or not? Well, I think uh, I was supposed to, 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 uh, uh, to give ideas here. It looks like, I mean, uh, Radiation is a problem, this is clear. Shielding, passive shielding uh, can be a solution on the planet, but not really on transit. Uh, maybe the, the, the best solution, uh, the best idea is to use a magnetic shielding, is to build uh, magnetic fields uh, for the spacecrafts uh, that can do what is done on Earth. So it's not, really my, it's not really a new idea. It's the same idea that God had a few billions of years ago when he said, okay, I want to make life, but I created radiation already. What can I do now? Okay, ma maybe I can make a magnetic field, you know? <laughs> and you see, it's very, it's very effective uh, in protecting uh, the Earth and our life uh, from space radiation. Thank you very much.